Hi guys, Rachel here with The Cackling Moon. Here is going to be a video where I'm gonna discuss with you what to expect um, with a tarot reading. And I'm gonna talk about the different factors. So there's different types of tarot readings. What can you expect with your session? Um, so if you're curious to see what I have to say, please keep watching. <laughs> there's multiple ways that you can get a tarot reading um, you can have in-person sessions where you physically there with your reader face to face there are virtual face-to-face -face sessions which take place on FaceTime Skype zoom Instagram video chat Facebook video chat whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> a virtual face-to-face -face. Um, then you have your phone readings then you have your voice message readings where they just record their voice and they send it to you in email. There's also email readings where they're going to type up your reading and send it to you in email. Um, there's video re readings as well where they're pre-recorded. You are not present and it is not a live reading, but they are also recording it as if you were sitting with them. Um, and then you will receive, you know, that video to watch at your own convenience. There's snail mail readings where some readers will handwrite your your tarot reading or sometimes they'll type it up, depends. And they will physically mail it to you to your address. Those are kind of sweet. <laughs> I've done those a, a while for a while. Um, so those are always like, a, you know, it's nice. It's like a little sweet thing to get something in the mail. Um, what else? Am I forgetting anything? I don't think so. I think that that's pretty much like the gist of the readings that you can expect. So what to expect when you're getting a tarot reading in general, whether it is virtual, in-person, phone, chat, whatever. <laughs> what to expect is you're going to have your reader connect with you energetically. They're going to connect with you intuitively. They're going to connect with you psychically or mediumshipally, if that's even a word. <laughs> whatever way, however they describe it, okay? Um, you're going to have somebody who may or may not pull cards for you. It is a tarot reading, so they should be pulling cards. Um, but it's, it, they're going to have a deck of cards. So there's tons of decks, but they're generally going to have a deck of tarot cards. Sometimes they will also have Oracle cards. It just depends on if they do both. Okay. So some readers read with both. I read with a shit ton of decks. <laughs> some readers only read with one deck. It just depends. Um, and what they're going to do is they're going to pull cards for you based off of either your question or your energy. Sometimes readers won't even need you to ask a question right off the bat. They'll just start pulling cards and see what comes up in the cards. Um, a lot of times, though, you will ask a question or you will have a conversation with your reader while they're pulling cards. Um, so... That's why it is very important to have your questions written down or at least be aware of what you want to ask so that you can get the most out of your reading session, okay? Um, so usually when you first arrive to a tarot reading, let's say you're going to the metaphysical store to get one done. I used to read in metaphysical stores for a couple years. So um, from my experience and from my, um, <laughs> from my point of view and my perspective, usually the client already has that reading booked, um, especially if the, if the shop requires the appointment be made ahead of time. So usually you will book your appointment. Some shops will require you to make payment prior to your reading. Other shops will take payment after the reading. So it just depends. Some metaphysical shops will do walk-ins. So you can walk into the store while you're shopping for your crystals or whatever. Then you'll, you might see like they'll have um, a, a board up advertising their readings or the reader might even be in the shop. Like I used to roam around the shop <laughs> and I would just tar start talking to some of the customers and, um, and, uh, you know, and I would in introduce myself and whatnot. And next thing you know, they were in the little office or the little room where I was doing readings and I was reading for their, reading their cards. Um, so sometimes you can do walk-ins also. It just depends. I think it, it depends on the flow, the flow of the shop. Is the shop like really busy and really well known or is it a smaller shop and it's like the walk-ins are a little bit more accessible. Um, so once you make your booking and whether you pay ahead of time or not, 
I also say to bring money for a tip, okay? Um, because it's not going to be, usually it shouldn't be mandatory, but it is something nice to do. So just pre be prepared to tip um, for your reading. So usually the reader will be in the back. <laughs> so you'll have the store and then you will have like a back space where there's usually an office, a room, a classroom, um, or just a, a, a space in the corner. Usually like these metaphysical shops try to make it as private as possible because a lot of times you are, you know, answering really sensitive questions. Um, so they like to make it as private as possible. If it's a really good shop, you know, they'll, they'll, they will do that. Um, so you'll be taken to the back when your reader is ready for you and your reader will usually have a table set up, okay? Sometimes they get really into it <laughs> and your table will have all this beautiful like decor. You may have crystals on the table. The reader might have all of their decks on the table. Their decks will be like placed everywhere and like ready for ready to go. Sometimes there's candles. You can expect candles, incense, whatever. Um, we like to kind of make the the experience as magical as possible at least that's what i would like to do <laughs> because a lot of times you are reading for people who have never had their cards read so you want to give them that like that mystical experience um so then you're going to sit down and pretty much if you are um obviously you're going to be on a time limit so you're reading your session could be as little as 15 minutes sometimes maybe 10 minutes just depends on the store um 30 minutes an hour whatever. So you're going to get yourself comfortable and sit down and um, your reader is most more than likely going to start to conversate with you to get you to loosen up. <laughs> that is really, really important is that you start communication with your reader. A lot of people kind of go through this like frozen phase <laughs> in their beginning of their reading where they are not saying a single word. Um, they'll just sit there really quiet and I don't know if it's because they're nervous or because they feel like they, you know, I feel like a lot of people go into their readings expecting their mind to be read and you have to realize that your reader is not a mind reader, if they're an energy reader. <laughs> so they're not gonna be like reading your mind and your thoughts. They're not able to do that, you know? Mm. So that's why um, it's important that your reader does kind of start to get you a little bit loosened up. And usually my approach to that would be I would start to talk to my customer or my client, my sitter, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I would start a dialogue. I'd ask, you know, oh, have you ever had a reading before? Or tell me about, you know, how has your day been today? Like really gentle conversation just trying to break the ice, trying to get you comfortable, okay? Um, sometimes I would do a breathing exercise with my sitter. <laughs> so I would say, okay, let's take a couple deep breaths in and out, in and out, and do that like once or twice just to help them relax. Um, sometimes I would even give them a crystal of mine to hold on to if I noticed that they were really tense or they were really like nervous. Um, so you, your reader will do different things, but basically, by them starting to talk to you, they're not trying to get information out of you because I feel like that's another thing is that <laughs> people who get their read their cards read, especially if it's their first one, they one, they're expecting you to read their mind, and two, I feel like they think by you talking to them and like trying to like ask them a question or two, they think they're automatically in their mind, they're like, Oh, you're fake, like you you should already know, <laughs> which is not the case. Um so if it's a really good reader, they're going to do what they can to relax you. They're gonna do what they can to break the ice and just to kind of get you to settle down and to be more comfortable with where you're at. <laughs> so um, that's what I would do. I would start dialogue. Then um, your reader, depending on the reader, um, usually we would go into our little quick little thing of our ethics. Um, you know, okay, just letting you know, I don't do these types of readings or you're free to ask whatever question you wanna ask. This is the time limit. I have the time set. That's another thing is like, I, I would always set my time on my phone. So I put the little alarm thing on because I could talk a mile a minute and I don't want to go over time. Okay. So it, you'll, your reader will do different things. Everyone's different. And then the reading starts. So literally, as soon as you start to sit down, boom, as soon as your butt hits that chair, your reading has started. Okay. Um, and you want to make sure that you're getting your time your session, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting your questions answered and whatnot. So that's why I'm saying like, don't be afraid to speak up. 
okay? Your reader might be going off on a tangent on something that doesn't resonate with you. You have to speak up, all right? So as the reading starts, they'll start to shuffle their cards. They're probably asking you a little bit about yourself or they'll ask, they'll put point blank ask, ask you, do you have questions for me for this reading so I can get started, okay? So usually what I do is once my person starts to talk to me, I'm shuffling those cards. <laughs> I'm shuffling the cards because that energy, once they start opening their mouth and they're talking, that little energy exchange is going boom, 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 boom. Like it's a, it's a flow. And so I start shuffling the cards as they're talking and I'll start pulling cards. Even before they ask a question, I'll have the, some cards pulled. As they start to ask their question, I'm reading what the cards are telling me and then we start the, the reading. Um, sometimes I'll wait for them to ask their question, especially if they, they say so, something like, oh, I have a ton of questions. Okay, like roll them at me. Let me have it, you know? <laughs> um, so then once they start to ask, then I'll pull cards. Um, your reader will do different things. Everyone's gonna be different. We all have our own styles. Some readers pull one or two cards per question. Some people pull a shit ton of cards, okay? <laughs> your reader will be different. Um, and I think that's important for, for you guys who are watching this that are actually getting your cards read. You may have had an experience with one reader. It doesn't mean they're all the same, okay? We're all different. We do things differently. Um, so don't go into a reading with an expectation that it's going to be the same way as with that one reader. If you, and if, the, if it's that, if that is the case and if that is what you want to experience, go to the same reader. <laughs> but if you're trying out someone new, um, go with an open heart and an open mind because it's not going to be the same. Um, so yeah, so that's basically what happens is your reader pulls cards for you and usually like they'll ask you questions. So sometimes we'll start to explain what we're seeing in the cards and then we'll ask, does that resonate? Is this correct? Okay. That's, we have to do that to make sure that you guys are verbally telling us, yes, it is or no, it's not. Because if it's not correct or if it doesn't resonate, I don't want to waste your time reading for something that doesn't even resonate. So that's why it's important you guys like maintain dialogue and you speak up. Okay. Um, so then usually if your reader is really good, they're going to kind of keep an eye. They're keeping an eye out the most of the time. They're keeping an eye on that time clock, <laughs> especially if this is done in an actual, um, store because you know, the readers are only getting a percentage of what you pay for, um, uh, which is another thing why tips are so nice because let's say like when I was reading in a shop, um, I was getting, I think I was getting, how much was I? I think 35, 30, it was like 30 or 35% of what I made was going to the shop. Okay. So I'm not seeing hundred percent of it because I'm working for someone's business. So that's why we're, that's where the tips come in. It's nice to get your own tip. Okay. Um, so the reader is going to keep an eye on that time because usually the shops are really strict about going over. Um, if you're going over the time, maybe if it's only one or two minutes, it's different. But if you're going over like 10, 15 minutes, they're going to charge you. So they want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth, but also that you're not, <laughs> you're not trying to like get extra time and not pay for it. So your reader will most likely always have their eye on the clock. Um, and then if they're really good, they'll have a self timer. So boom, like once your time is up, it'll go off and they should be closing the session even prior to the time going off. They should say, usually I like to give like that five minute mark. I try to pay attention enough to know, okay, well, we have about five more minutes left of our session. Is there anything else you want to ask? Um, if you want to go over time, let me know. And that's a good time to kind of make that decision. <laughs> um, but it's, it, you know, it's everyone's different. Every experience will be somewhat different, but for the most part, that's what to expect. Your cards will be read. Things will come up, okay? Um, <laughs> when you're getting your cards read, um, we're not reading your mind, but we are reading your energy. And sometimes stuff will come up that you're maybe not ready to hear or you're not thinking will come up, okay? <laughs> The cards have a way of doing that. Um, I am a believer that things that pop up in a tarot reading are things that that person needs to hear, okay? So I'm very gentle in my approach. If something really, really touchy comes up, um, I'm very gentle in my approach. And this comes with years of experience um, of bringing certain topics up. If you don't want to talk about it, you have to say, I'm not comfortable. Let's not get into that. 
fine, we won't, you know? But when you go to get your cards read, be aware that those cards may bring up some stuff. <laughs> they may bring up those skeletons that you've been having locked away in your closet for quite a while. So it's just be aware of that. And the more that you're aware of it, the more comfortable you're gonna be. The other thing that's really important, which is this, this kind of goes hand in hand with the video, the previous video in this series, um, is the importance of doing research on your reader. The more that you know about your reader and the more comfort and connection that you feel with them, the more that is going to come out. <laughs> um, because that energy flow is strong, okay? So if you are reading with someone or if someone is doing your reading that maybe you just don't resonate with, you don't like their energy, the reading just feels like shit, usually it's because that connection between you and your reader is not, it's, it's off, it's, there's, it's not strong. And it's usually because one, you don't trust that person, two, you don't like their ethics or there's just something that, about them that, you're, that doesn't vibe with you, or two, or, or two, or three. <laughs> <laughs> you are closed off when you go into your reading, um, which is why I also say to open yourself up, okay? Um, but the ba basically, the experience of a reading, there will be emotions, okay? Um, and your readers are aware of that. If they've been reading for a while, they know someone sitting in front of them may burst into tears. They know that some of the stuff that you are talking about with them, even though you've never met them before, right? Right? Or, you've, or you don't know anything about them except for like the couple hours or minutes that you've spent together in your reading sessions, you know more about that person than maybe their own husband or wife does, okay? So you it's, it, that is why the integrity of a reader is so important and that is why your bond with that reader is so important. Um, if it's a really good reader, they're gonna have a box of tissues ready for you. <laughs> that was a big one I learned. I learned my lesson with that. Um, because I had a sitter one time that started bursting into tears and I didn't bring the tissue box into the room. So they're sniffling and all this and I felt really bad. Um, so you want to make sure you're prepared for that as readers. Make sure you have that box of tissue because they're going <laughs> to, the tears will come out. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful experience. It's a spiritual, a spiritual experience and energy is powerful. You know, like I said, stuff will pop up that maybe you weren't expecting to have come up. <laughs> the cards will bring up your dirty. Um, and then also there's amazing like new revelations being made or there's validations happening too in your reading. So sometimes you're going to have a spirit guide come through, especially if your tarot reader is um, has their mediumship abilities or they have like that sixth sense to sense spirit. You may have a spirit visitation in your reading come through, <laughs> but not all readers are going to be able to do that. So it's also very important to be aware of that. And that goes hand in hand with doing your research. If you want a mediumship reading alongside your tarot reading, you got to make sure that that reader can do both, okay? Um, because not all readers do that. Um, and then at the end of your session, so once your once your reader starts to close session, um, usually there's kind of like a little bit of like, how did you do? You're drying your eyes. You're getting your purse. You know, that's usually the time when you bring out your tip. Okay, um, now shops are different. I worked in two different shops doing readings and one shop took the tip with the payment prior to the session. So you, there wasn't that awkward like giving money to the reader. <laughs> um, and they took the tip because they took a percentage of that, of that tip for themselves. So that was kind of like the downfall of that shop. The other shop I read for where I read for a much longer um, you got to keep your entire tip um, and usually the tip came after so once when you're and, and that was the shop where the people were paying for their reading after the session was over um, so then they were you know they're more likely when you pay after you tend to be more likely to tip because when you're reading when you're tipping before you don't really know what your experience is going to be like you know so um, but usually if you're sitting in, in the room with your reader, usually that's the time you, you get your tip out. And if they can't take your tip then and there, they will tell you, you'll have to pay up front. <laughs> and that's the way it is. Um, and then, yeah. And so you'll have like your, 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 your gentle little, you know, I hope you enjoyed your session or how did your session, how did you feel that kind of thing. And then you make your way to the front, make your payment, put your tip in, whatever you got to do. And you're on your way. 
and that's your experience. Um, a lot of times also you may be so blown away with your session that you are already booking an appointment for your next one. <laughs> so I've also had that experience where um, some people would book a reading with me for the next like two weeks later or the next month or whatever. Um, and so you could do that too. Like if you went, that's the, that's the nice thing about in-person readings is you get to meet the person <laughs> and you get to feel out their energy in that way. Um, okay. So that's for in-person. So, um, the other things like to expect, if you are doing a virtual reading, a virtual in-person session, it's going to be the same thing except virtual. So you're going to be in your home. They're going to be in their home or wherever they're doing their readings. Um, but you're going to see each other on the phone, okay? It's like a FaceTime, like when you FaceTime your friends. So similar stuff. These kind of readings, though, these virtual ones, nine times out of ten, you were paying before. Um, and that's just to to for the safety of the fact that, you know, you're providing a service virtually. You want to make sure you're getting that payment first. So I take payment before my virtual sessions. Um, so what to experience for this is, is obviously your, your reader will let you know this is um, how we're going to do our session if it's Skype, FaceTime, whatever. And they're going to provide you with the, that information so you know, you know where your guys are going to meet up for your video session. Um, and then usually like I always put a timer on for myself, <laughs> but you're in the privacy still of your own home with the protection of just you're on the screen. So it's kind of nice. It's still, it's still an in-person experience, but you're like, you still have like that little safety net there, you know? Um, and it's the same thing, same session. They're going to pull cards for you. You may see them like how you see me now, or sometimes I'll move the phone down. So it's like facing the table. So you're only seeing the, the, my hands and the cards. I, I just do whatever feels natural for me. Um, and then your session is there. And then obviously when it's over, it's over and it's already been paid for. So if you choose to give a tip after, then that's up to you to go to their website and tip them. Um, if you're doing an email or a video chat reading, um, or a, a, not a video chat, if you're doing an email or a phone or a, um, audio reading, it is going to be up to that reader to make sure that they have the information they need from you. They're going to need your email address. Okay. So they know where to send it. <laughs> um, they're going to need your questions beforehand. So some of these readers will ask you for your first name. So they know who to address. Um, and then they're going to ask you for your list of questions and that's when you're going to provide it to them. Okay. So everyone's different when you book with me online. Now that I have this fancy new way of booking, <laughs> you could submit your questions and your email info to me all in one space, one place when you're paying. So obviously for these services too, you're paying ahead. Um, and so you're going to give them your questions. If it's a one question reading, only ask one question, you know, like honor their services. Um, if it is a if it's like a bomb ass, like huge reading and you can ask as many questions as you want, go ahead and like list them. <laughs> but nine times out of 10, if it is a virtual reading, if it's email or whatnot, they're going to limit you to your questions because obviously there's only so much they could type. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, the video audio recordings and the email, you're going to get them an email. The audio, you're going to get that link so you can listen to it from your phone. You could save it onto your, 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 um, your, oh my God, what is it called? <laughs> your Google Drive. You could save it so you could have it forever, okay? This is the cool part about these, these types of readings is you have something. You have a physical or just like an item forever so you can listen to that reading two, three years later. <laughs> so the audio, you will have a link so you can listen to their voice recording. The email is usually, it's usually, everyone's different, but usually it's a PDF attachment. So you will download the PDF and it is a typed out reading, like a little essay. And some readers, if they're really good, what they do, they're gonna provide pictures of the cards that they pulled for you. They're gonna provide nice lengthy paragraphs of your answers and your interpretation of the reading. Um, sometimes they have really beautiful layouts. It's just, everyone's different and that's the magic of getting an email reading. And also you could print it out and keep it forever. So I have a whole binder. I have to bring it, I have to, that's another video, but <laughs> I have a whole binder of old readings that I've had since like 2012. <laughs> and um, you could see the style of each reader. Everyone's different. 
Um, the snail mail readings, your reader is going to ask you for your first name. I don't know about the last name. I don't think it's really important. Um, but they're going to ask you for an address, okay? So, that, so if you're going to be booking a snail mail reading, you need to be comfortable with providing your address, whether it's your home address or it's a P.O. box, um, so that they can mail out your reading. <laughs> Um, and then obviously they're going to ask you also for your questions too, so that they have that too. Um, what am I missing? The video. So the video readings, which is what I'm really known for, you guys will see them pop up every once in a while on my YouTube channel. I usually post not all of them, but most of them public. Um, all of my video readings are anonymous, so you do not know who it is. <laughs> um, and it's basically a recorded video like this, um, but it's as if you were sitting with me in a reading. It's the experience of the tarot reading without having to be there. <laughs> so that's what's so nice for these because this this type of style works for people who are shy, people who do not want to be present for their reading. They just want to give you their questions, you do it, they trust in you, and then you give it to them later. <laughs> Um, so the video readings are really cool for that. They're also cool because it is a link that you can keep. I have um, all of my readings stay sit forever on my YouTube until YouTube, if ever one day YouTube disappears, then they'll be gone. But <laughs> as far as YouTube is going to, as long as YouTube exists, your reading will exist. Um, so sometimes I will unlist them and unlisting them means that they just are, they still exist, but they're not, no, no, they're no longer visible on my YouTube channel. And the only way you could see it is if you have the direct link. Um, but for the most part, you know, you, every once in a while, if you guys follow my channel, you'll catch some of my readings pop up. And then that's basically the video reading experience. Um, and then with that, you know, I ask you for your email. I ask you for your first name. I also ask you for your questions. Simple as that. Um, now, after, let's talk about after your tarot reading experience. This goes for any way that we just talked about. The follow-up. Every reader is different. <clears throat> if you're doing it in person, face-to-face, -face, physical, you may have a chance for a follow-up. You Nine times out of 10, you have a better chance of a follow-up than you do um, when you book virtual, okay? Because you have the reader sitting right there in front of you. And if they don't have a, a next appointment and they feel comfortable walking with you through the store to answer any questions you may have, as long as it's not a full-blown reading, <laughs> then follow-up can happen. Um, so follow-up is usually when your client asks you um, to re kind of like to explain something, you know, maybe they didn't understand something you meant or they're asking you to, oh, what chakra was it that you mentioned? I forgot. That's why it's important, you guys, if you're getting a reading, take notes. <laughs> um, so that's usually what happens in the follow-up. For me, with my online readings, any of my, any of my services that I offer, follow-up can happen in the email. So I always say at the end of the reading, I will tell you guys, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or feedback, please email me. I try my best to say that with every reading that I do. Um, and it's basically, that is your time when you send me an email, whether you're saying, oh my God, your reading was absolutely amazing, I loved it, or oh, I didn't really resonate with it, whatever, you know. Um, that is your time for a follow-up. <laughs> and it's only once, once only. Um, so in this follow-up email, you know, it's nice to give a review of your reading, whether it's positive or negative, because it helps the reader, okay? Um, so try to get in the habit of reviewing your stuff. If you don't, it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> but if you were gonna email for a follow-up, at least, you know, give a review. <laughs> um, and then also in that email, this is where you ask your questions for follow-up. Oh, I, you mentioned this, I'm not really sure what you meant by that. Or what was that chakra that you mentioned? Or what deck was that that you used? I get that too. Like some people will ask me, oh, what deck was it that you used for my reading? Which is why I try my best to list the decks I use um, because I do have a lot of readers who watch my channel. But that's for you. So yes, I do allow a follow-up, but it is only one email, okay? So I'm not gonna be like emailing you back and forth for a week doing this over and over follow-up because really that turns into another session. So um, you feel free to email me about your questions and whatnot, but if it turns into another full-blown session, then I will let you know. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much about the follow-up. Every reader is different. Some readers don't do follow-up, some people do. Um, but it's just up to that person, right? <sighs> what else? I think that's basically it as far as like what to experience. Um it's a fun and it's a fun and exciting experience to have your cards read, you guys. And if your reader is really good and they make it a magical experience, even better. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm really curious to know, those of you guys who are watching this, let me know. I want to know your experiences um, with your tarot reading. Did your reader make it mystical and magical? Was it at a festival? Was it at a, a party? Um, what was your, what are your experiences with your reading? Were there crystals? Did your reader have crystals or was it just a naked table? Was it like absolutely boring <laughs> or did they make it all magical? Um, let me know. I want to know your experiences. So comment below. And, um, and if you guys also have any ideas for other topics you want to hear me talk about, this is going to be a series. So I'm making a series of all of these tarot reading you know, 411s and info and, you know, what to experience or my experience or whatnot. So this is going to be its own series. Um, but if you have any feedback or if you have any ideas of topics you would like to see me discuss, please also leave that in the links. I mean, in the links, in the comments below. <laughs> I think I need to have another cup of coffee. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. I will talk to you soon. Bye, my loves.